In this video, I'm going to share with you five of my favorite tips to boost productivity and unity. So let's get started right away with number one. You can trigger methods easily in the inspector. So here I have the low poly scene from the asset store. And since this is a rocket themed video, I decided to turn those trees into rockets. They all have a script that's going to enable a particle system and start moving them up. And so in the script, as you can see, this is a private method but I can easily trigger it in the inspector by adding the context menu attribute. In the brackets, you can just give it any name you want. It doesn't have to be the same as the method, because basically, since this is above the method, that already tells Unity I want this method to be triggered. But it should obviously be something that reminds you of which method it is. And now back in the inspector, I can just right click the script. And as you can see, this method got triggered, even though it's private. I see a lot of people just adding an input check in the update loop when they want to test out method. But there are a few downsides to this. So first of all, you might forget that it's in there. So maybe yesterday you have been working on something and that also triggered when hitting space. And now you're wondering what the hell is going on. Or you might even ship the game with it. Apart from that, you don't really have control over which object is going to trigger or whether every object that has the script on it is going to trigger the method. With the create context menu attribute, you can choose exactly which object. Now, of course, in the case of rockets, you probably want to see how it looks when all the trees turn into rockets at the same time. So here it is. Ah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Another big advantage of using the context menu attribute is that you can use it even while the game isn't running. So you could, for example, automatically rename game objects, or you can even build your scenes with it. So here I have this tree manager that has a method called create trees, and it's also asking for a game object as a parameter. Since we can't do that with right clicking, what I usually do in that case is I just make a second method that has the context menu attribute called trigger create trees and that's going to trigger it and it's going to use a serialized field as a parameter. And now in the inspector I can just assign something from the tree prefabs and when I right click even though the game is not running and I click create trees I get 50 trees based in an awkward position but it's just an example that you can use it to build your systems. And I think oftentimes it's worth it to rather spend some time building a system and tweak it instead of doing everything manually. And the context menu attribute is what's going to allow you to quickly test those things. Moving on with number two, the almighty F12. F12 is a really awesome key to use when working in Visual Studio because you can select any use of a method or variable or event and when you hit F12, it's going to take you right to where you declared that method or variable. And this even works for things in other classes. It just takes you right to the original declaration and that's of course especially useful for methods. Now if you don't want to jump, you can also just hit Alt F12 and that's going to be like a quick peek and then you can just close that. It's really good, sometimes you just need a quick reminder what that method actually does that you wrote last week. And lastly, you can hit Shift F12 to see all the times a method, variable or anything is used. So for example, here I have an event, I hit F12, it takes me right to the declaration, I see, ah, oh, okay, that's who's sending it out, that's the parameters it's asking for. And then I hit Shift F12 and I see all the times another class is subscribing to it. And that brings us to number three, a few tips for quick navigation. Those keys on the right of your enter key are actually quite useful. With page up and down, you can save a lot of scroll time. And also if you hit those keys a lot and you're still not at the top or bottom of your class, it's a good reminder that maybe it's time to split up your class because it got too big. With the position and end key, you can immediately jump to the start or end of line. And if you do that while holding down shift, you select it. So that's really good for when you want to copy or delete a line. 
Also pretty useful for quick navigation are those forward and backward keys on the side of your mouse. So when you use your good old F12 that you know by now, you might want to like jump to a method, you do some changes and then you can use the backward button of your mouse to go back to where you actually started from. And of course this works for multiple steps and you can always just go forward and backward. And once you're getting used to it, it makes things really easy to navigate. And now let me ask you, what is the most useless key on any keyboard? Well, if you did not answer caps lock, you're probably one of those angry internet trolls yelling your opinion at other people. In this case, you should look at your life and maybe seek some changes. For everyone else, you can remap the caps lock key. I use the free software called Sharpkeys. I will post a link to it and instructions in the description. And it's just really easy to just say this key is now supposed to behave like it's another key. So what I did, I made the caps lock work just like the arrow down. And that's quite useful for when typing on stuff and IntelliSense starts suggesting things. And now I can just use the little finger and I can easily go down and choose exactly the one I want. And again, once you're used to it, it makes things so much faster. And I've never ever came across a situation where I thought, ah, I wish I had a caps lock key. And lastly, one of my absolute favorites, control plus period. It's almost like your little assistant or slave, depending whatever you're from. And it just does everything for you. So, for example, you don't have to write out namespace that you use. You can just write out the thing that you want in that namespace. For example, here I write text, which I know is in the unity.ui namespace. Then I hit control plus period and it says, oh, maybe you want to use that because it also knows that it's in that namespace. Control plus period can even create methods for you and they don't have to be in the class you're creating them. So here I have a reference to another script, the Kevin script. And now I can say main cabin dot increase temperature and say I want a parameter by how much I want to increase it. And that method doesn't exist. I just type it out and I hit control plus period and now it created that method. Now of course if I hit F12 and not on the float like I did here but the actual method. It takes me there and it created it. And it also realized I passed in a float so it added the float parameter to it. Now if I change my mind and I think, you know what, I also want to pass in a string, I can just once again just type it out, new name, and I hit control plus period, and once again it figures out, oh, you probably want to add a string parameter to the method, and it just did it. Another thing it can do for you is it can take a few lines and make them into a separate method. So maybe I want to increase the temperature in a different method. So I just select the lines, hit control plus period and say extract method and then I can give it a name. And the nice thing is it's also going to trigger the method right where I cut those lines out. Okay, this is it for me. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, just leave a comment below. And you would really help me out by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Thank you and goodbye.